Hey everyone, Ben I'm here, and today we have episode 2 of Road to King of Games, which is a mini-series in which we started off with a budget of about $100-$150, um, making a Salmon Grade deck, uh, considering that we are a returning player to the competitive scene, and we are trying to get the most competitive deck out of a reasonable budget. It's not as budget as the previous series in which we were a beginner player. Uh, this time around, we have an actual uh, meta budget, but it's not too expensive either. So today we will have the second profile with a few added cards with, um, you know, added value basically. Um, but we will also be opening a few Savage Strike special editions because, you know, it feels appropriate using, um, these in this video as we will be getting a lot of the Savage Strike support added into this deck. And we'll also be revealing who won the giveaway a little further into the video, so stay tuned. First of all, let's open these bad boys. We've opened a full display box, uh, Felix and I, um, previously on this channel. So you guys should not have any surprises uh, about the, um, well, basically these cards right here, the promos. But if you guys haven't seen them, since we're not going into details this time around, I would recommend you guys uh, go and watch that video on the channel. You can as well just watch as many of those videos you want, not necessarily this specific opening. Oh wow, we have one of each, that's nice. Uh, not this specific product, and not necessarily this specific YouTuber, but it would be appreciated if you guys would give the light of day to my videos. It would be very nice of you guys. So Grid Sweeper is one of the actually maybe interesting cards for this because it's a Cybers, but it's not a fire and the effect is iffy. But you can special summon it if you have a field spell, which this deck does like to play. So for you guys who are a little more budget than what I can um, provide to you guys, that is an option for you guys. So let's start off with these packs. Still looking for some secret rare glory. And, ooh, nice. It's not a secret, but it's an ultra. And we have Orcus Nightmare 2. Nice. We have Cyrus Quantum Dragon, level 7 monster. Uh, which has some very, very good um, effects with um, bouncing effects and, um, well, basically it's easy to summon because it's level 7 and, uh, well, it protects your stuff too. So that's very nice. We'll put this in the back here. Wow, was not expecting that on the first pack. Okay, that's a good omen. Um, I would not recommend playing this in this specific deck because you would probably be uh, more capable of going into some... Um, level 6. You'll see pretty soon why, but uh, it's still a very good card, and if you are able to get it out, it can help you. What? Witch's Strike and Violet Chimera in the same pack? Whoa, this is nice. Okay, this, this is lovely. Man, this is like $20 of special editions, and we get a secret worth about 30 and we get an Ultra, which is about... 10, I believe this Ultra is, maybe a little more, maybe around that. And we've only opened the first three packs, so the second three should also be very lucky. Hopefully. Trickstar, Band, Sweet Guitar, and Incantation, Chalice Slime. Chalice Slime. Anyways, Witch's Strike is a card you guys could play in this deck, because a lot of the meta usually uses uh, negation effects. What? We have an, a Secret Rare as well? TD Trident Launcher and Fusion of Fire. Wow, two secrets. Man, these packs are awesome. Let's put this one here, I guess, for now. Fusion of Fire is something I will show you guys a little later uh, in this deck. It's not in the main deck, though, but, you know, I'll show it pretty soon, no matter. We have Fateful Hour and Detoni eh, Detonate Delita. Okay, wow, okay. So that's going off strong, and I am pretty glad that we pulled... Um, well, which is Strike, obviously, and Quantum, obviously, as well, but the, um, Fusion of Fire and the Violet Chimera are stuff that are used in the side deck, and uh, I'm very glad we pulled those, because they're rares, and they're easy to get for you guys, which is uh, part of the budget option for this deck. Anyway, so main deck hasn't changed much. We still play three Gazelles, still play three Spinnies, uh, we play two Foxies, uh, one Jaguar and one Falco, 
two moles because they're easy to play. And if you normal summon one, if you draw the two of them on their first turn, normal summon one, make your bail links special summon the next one. You can only use the special summon effect once per turn, I believe. But at least you're not bricked. If if you're playing three, you might brick. You know, we have Lady Debug three times because it's good. Buffer Load two times because it's good. Um, the deck changed just a bit. I think the previous version was 40 cards, but I kept drawing the field twice in my starting hand. I kept drawing the same monsters, which is not a good thing. You don't want to start with two spinnies in your hand because you can only use its, each of its effects once per turn, I believe. But anyways, it's it, it was not as easy, so I increased it to 45 uh, with a lot of searchers and or other things that at least your hand will be a little more varied, you know, more variety. We have three Ash Blossoms and three Effects Veilers, just like the previous version of the deck. We have one Pankratops. I think the previous version had two, but I moved one to the side deck because um, going first, it's not that good. Not quite sure if it had to. But anyways, here is where it starts changing a bit. You guys will notice we have two Wheel Eaters and one Tracker. You don't want to play three Wheel Eaters because they're tuners, and if you play the three of them in your starting hand, well, I think um, you can only special summon it this uh, by its effect once per turn. So if you have three, you summon one normally, special summon the next one, you can't use the third one. It's a wasted card in your hand. Yes, you can use these to make your exceeds, but if you have a third one, it's pure useless at that point. So that's why we play two, and it's a bit of an expensive card. I think it's about 20 or $25 Canadian as of when this video was filmed, but the special edition, as you guys just uh, saw, is has just been released so it might have been decreased a bit maybe it's about 20 now but anyways this this is an easy common to get but this is about 45 to 50 dollars worth of cards right here so like f between 40 and 50 canadian so probably less in the us but anyways these are very good because they help you go into your links they help well depending on which links you're making but whatever uh, these, these help you mostly go into your uh, rank 3 plays and your synchro plays as you guys will see very soon they have um, been added to the extra deck we have a lot of level 3s all of these which are 8 level 3s but there are also 2 buffer lows and 3 ash blossoms which are level 3s so you do have a more varied array of going to your exceeds. Uh, this is also something I've seen a lot of people play, and they have been very useful for them and for myself. And they also have a special effect. When this one is used for a synchro summon, you can target a monster on the field with less attack than the synchro monster to, uh, that used this material and blow it up. And this guy here, if you, can, um, if you use this as a synchro material, uh, the monster gains 600 attack. So I'll explain a little later how good that is, like how good that truly is, but it will be pretty soon, guys. We have three circles, didn't change. Two sanctuaries, didn't change. You want to play more than one. If your opponent twin twisters it or ogres it or whatever they do, you're screwed. Your, your plays are going to be a lot more resource um, cost and you, you're just going to be screwed. So playing two is good and that's why we're playing a little more than 40 cards because I kept drawing the two of them at the beginning of the game, even when I put one at the quarter um, part of the deck and one at the bottom of the deck when I was shuffling, they would still end up like three, quart three quarters at a time. I didn't get those two in, the, uh, in my hand at the same time. But you know, if you're making uh, veilings and you already have one in your hand, that's also not as good. You would rather m go and search for this with your second um, veilings but whatever, we have two wills of the Salmon Great because it's very useful. You can actually bring back your link monsters if you don't tribute the card, you know. But uh, yeah, this helps you go into your bigger combos. Uh, we have three called by the graves because hand traps are a pain. And also because this stops a lot of the meta game. Uh, it's good against mirror matches. It's good, it's good against um, strikers. It's good against zombies. It's good against... Gokis, it's good against Dark Warriors, it's good against so many things, you know. Uh, Orcists hate this, uh, but whatever, it's good. It, it, overall, it's very good. We have Monster Reborn, which I believe was in the previous version. We have added Twin Twisters, because this deck does not have a lot of back row removal, and this helps you get your Salmon Grades in your graveyard as well. If you're going second, and you use this to discard Spinny, and you had a, um, you had a um, Gazelle in your hand, 
Well, you basically get Gazelle's effect, you get Spinny in the grave so he can come back, and you get rid of two of your opponent's back row, which could have stopped you playing your cards. And as well, your opponent, if they play Floodgates, you're screwed. So this is a very good way of getting rid of those. We have Emergency Teleport because we play three Psychics. Uh, you guys could add some Ghost Ogres if you want uh, in your extra deck, or well, not in your extra deck, your side deck, and you can switch out a few things if you know you're going second and you're afraid of specific cards your opponent plays. But this is a very good way of getting those extra summons, very good way of thinning the deck. And if you get this and one of these Psychics in your hand, well, at least you're not screwed. And if you do get the three Psychics in your hand, you can summon one normally, you can special summon one by the effect, and you can special summon the other one by the effect, this becomes useless. But you can always discard this for Twin Twisters, you can use it as bait phase down, uh, when you search your traps or whatever, um, at least this, when you, you, you know, you just set lots of cards face down, your opponent might hit this instead of hitting... Uh, any of the other uh, more important cards. And we have Foolish Burial Goods, which at least helps you get your traps in your graveyard for your um, recycling effect from Falco or from your late monsters. So this is a very good card. Yes, it's 45 cards, but I would rather draw this and one of the field spells than drawing the two field spells, which happens so often. I can't stress this out enough, guys. I don't know if it's only my bad luck, but it happens so often. Anyways, we also have a few traps the usual run for the traps we have two roars and two rages uh, you could play one rage only and you could also take out the foolish burial goods and uh, you, that makes it 43 cards so at least you have a better chance of drawing what you want you don't want to start with two rages in your hand either but I mean it's a very good card it's very versatile you can recycle it so I mean you could use uh, this cards effect to bring it back and you can actually recycle this or your uh, circle and that's basically a very good way of using your recycling effect without wasting it necessarily, you know? So that's the main deck. It didn't change much. Uh, about 40 or $50 worth of monsters. Um, about $3, $4. This is could be a common. This is not necessarily the cheapest rarity for these three cards. But you can get them very cheap for like a buck, uh, $2, I guess, and maybe one or two dollars also so you know it's like uh f let's assume that it's about fifty dollars difference in the main deck so now for the extra deck not much has changed we have three bail links three wolves i finally found the ones i couldn't find previously uh we have two heat leos because you know it's always interesting we have three mirage stallions one of them could easily be uh switched out for something in the side deck or any other card you guys want to add but um, I play against Felix's uh, Sky Strikers once in a while, and I keep having to out-resource him. And how out-resourcing some, um, some Sky Strikers is very difficult. So having three of them was a wise decision, because usually when you use Jaguar or uh, Sunlight Wolf's effect to recycle, you recycle Sunlight Wolf. And so it's a little difficult to um, always get what you need back into your extra deck. So out resourcing them is something very important and that's why I play three in here. Uh, depending on the opponent, I might switch one out for like a borrow load or something. Uh, we have Flame Administrator and Transcode. This is good for OTKing. This is not something you can play the effect with Mirage Stalio being used in the same turn. Well, at least previously in the, in the same turn. But this guy can be very good if you're summoning Sunlight Wolf and um, basically, you use Transcode to make Sunlight Wolf a 2300 attack, and he becomes a 2800 attack, and they're both immune to target, uh, targeting effects, which is very, very interesting. That's actually stopping a lot of things. That's why Nightmare Goblin was banned, stopping target effects. So it helps quite a bit uh, protect your Sunlight Wolf, and usually you would also have a Bail Link, so you can protect it from battle as well. So, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. But if you do have that, and you already have a Flame Administrator in your graveyard, he becomes a 3100 attack monster, this is a 2500 attack monster, and this is a 3600 attack monster. Very powerful combo right there to, uh, you know, overpower stuff, but whatever. And we have our two Synchros. Uh, we have Hyper Psychic Riser, if you're going first, it's an interesting card if you don't have much else you want to play. 
Uh, this can easily be switched out for anything else, really, but I do enjoy, since we have, like, five level three tuners, it's a worthy card to have, you know, having two um, extra deck synchros. We have monsters with less attack than this card cannot attack. So it's a 2,000 attack monster, but if you used the non-tuner one, it's a 2,600 attack monster, so it's pretty interesting. You can protect a lot of your other cards like Heat Leo, uh, not Sunlight, not Heat Leo, sorry, Sunlight Wolf can be protected. Um, but yeah, also neither player can activate the effects of face-up monsters on the field with more attack than this card. So if your opponent overextends a bit too fast and they go into their bow rolls, they can't use their Boral's effect. It's a 2,000 attack monster, and they are 3,000 attack. They can't use them. Uh, a lot of the other cards, uh, for example, the um, danger monsters, when they are special summoned back from the graveyard or whatever, they won't get their effects either. Uh, well, they don't really have effects when they're special summoned back, but you know what I mean. They, like, Big monsters are something that a lot of people would summon, so they have to get rid of this first. Uh, Dangerous was a bad example, but Orchists could be an example if they're playing uh, the big links in there. Um, I mean, Summon Sorceress has more attack than this, so that stops Summon Sorceress. It's, uh, it's interesting because they have to get rid of this first, and so if you don't have anything uh, at your, in your starting hand, you can always try to make this and stall for a turn or two, because a lot of people don't play spells and traps that blow things out of the way, and Cerberus only targets stuff in your main monster zone, so if you put this in your extra monster zone somehow, you have a very good fighting chance at protecting yourself and stopping them. So yeah, I mean, very good card right here. And we have Bryanac, the Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This I am very happy to see being uh, back from the ban list. It's been back for a while, but in this deck, it's actually very, very good. You can discard any number of cards to the graveyard, then target the same number of cards your opponent controls, return those tar targets to the hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. It's a 2300 attack monster, but if you use the other card uh, that I showed earlier, the common, it becomes a 2900 attack monster, which is much more respectable. And um, this effect can be used during your turn, but any of your turn. It's not a one-use thing, it's not the turn you summon it only. And you can discard cards like uh, Mole, like uh, Jaguar, like Falco, or discard stuff like Spinny, and you would get some bonus things from those being discarded into the, into the graveyard, and you get to return stuff, so if your opponent has stuff that can be targeted, but cannot be destroyed by card effects, this is your guy. This is your, your guy. And uh, basically, it doesn't say face up. So you can always get rid of your opponent's back row, you can get rid of their face-down monsters if they're playing um, flip effect decks or whatever. Uh, this is a very decent way of getting rid of stuff. I'm not saying it's necessarily good against, let's say, the um, the control variant of the sub-terrors, because they could obviously just chain their traps to return uh, monsters face up and whatever and use their effects right there, but at least you're forcing it to happen. And this is something you should usually make after already having played your wolves and whatever. And uh, at least even if they do flip face up, their monsters are still going back to their hand. So you can probably try to extend a bit more and deal some damage at the same time. Then we have the extra deck, uh, the side deck. Pardon me, I keep mixing those names up. Uh, basically here we have the Pankratops that I took out. We have a Jack Jaguar because recycling is important. Sometimes you might want to play more. I'm not quite certain that's worth it, but whatever. We have Detonate the Deleter, which is non-expensive and very capable for a, um, a Link 3 monster, because at the start of the damage step, when this card battles a face-up monster that is not a Link 3 or higher Link monster, so uh, if you're fighting um, a Link 2 or a Link 1, this is capable of doing a lot, because you can destroy that monster right away. Or once per turn, you can tribute one monster this card points to, then target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. So it's a very decent way of, you know, doing damage um, because it can still attack afterwards. Uh, but, you know, it's it's not the best. It's just a budget version, I guess, for in case you don't want to play these other things that I've just showed you guys. We have Violet Chimera. Pardon me. We have Violet Chimera and Fusion of Fire. Uh, this is always counted as a summon great card, so you can recycle it, which is very interesting. But you fusion summon one summon great monster, uh, fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand and or either field as fusion material. So your hand, you can send some spinnies, some moles, some whatever, and either field. And this card here says one summon great monster plus one link monster. 
you could use only cards on the opponent's field and you could easily make this during a mirror match. That is a very important thing to consider playing Salmon Grades because usually when the opponent has at least two or three monsters on their field, it's usually at least one Sunlight Wolf, which is a late monster, and probably more Salmon Grade stuff. So this is a good way of at least baiting out their counter traps or stealing away their extra links or whatever they have. So this is a very good way of dealing damage to... Um, well, you know, this is good against not only mirror matches, but also strikers, because they always have a link monster. You only have to summon one Salmon Grade card or use one from your hand, not even wasting your summon. Uh, like, let's say you have a Spinny and they have a uh, striker on the field. Get rid of their striker. They can't use uh, Ray's effect because it's not destroyed, I believe. I believe that's how it works. Um, anyways, they can't, I don't think they can use the effect because it's not destroyed. It's sent to the graveyard. Uh, so basically, you can attack directly in their life points with this big monster. And this card has a lot of good abilities. Um, basically, uh, it gains uh, attack ha equal to half the original attack with the materials used to summon it. So like the monster has 7 uh, 1,500 and Spinny has a low attack. But that's about 1,000 more attacks. So that's already very good um, uh, until the end of this turn, obviously. But once per battle, during the damage calculation, if this monster battles a monster with, uh, whose current attack is different from its original attack, so it's also very good against other um, strikers and or um, I think some decks also modulate attacks, but I'm not quite sure anymore. Uh, it's good against the mirror match, though, because you do modify attacks with transcode and stuff like that, I guess. Um, you can double this card's attack. So it's not the original attack, so it would be like the 3800 we had earlier would become a 7600 attack. Uh, if this card was fusion summon using um, itself as a material, uh, battles a monster, that monster's attack becomes zero. So you could play more than one, and you could recycle this, or you could use a lot of different combos with these, but they're very, very useful in here. Uh, so I put them in the side because you don't know necessarily what you're playing against. Like against True Draco, that would be useless, although... You do get to double your attack against them because their field spell boosts them. Anyways, and we have Boral Lord Dragon, which is a good thing to switch out your Mirage Salio if you're not switching out this, because this effect does not target when you steal a monster. So when you're playing against, let's say, um, Lunalites with their non-targetable, non-destroyable uh, versus effect thing, well, at least you can steal it and attack your opponent and blow up all their other special summon monsters, I guess. So that is a good way to deal damage. Anyways, let's get to the last part of today's video, or so I would say, but we do have the giveaway announcement to say. Uh, so yeah, the winner of the giveaway for this precious sealed um, promo card from last month, Lost Art Collection, and the two deck cores for the Salmon Greats, uh, basically... You're getting two deck cores without the hand traps, but it's it's still a very good start for a Salmon Grade deck. You only need hand traps, maybe one more version of the deck to have some triples for your d d different cards like these ones. And uh, you need some sunlights, but uh, you know, it's a very good start. Uh, so yeah, the winner of the giveaway is um, Lily Joe. Uh, so congratulations on winning. I believe you're from the Montreal area here in Canada, so that's pretty near to me, that's very nice. Uh, it's good to see that people from all around the world are uh, viewing these uh, videos, but it's also very nice to see that people on your own uh, home turf, I guess, uh, are also watching. Uh, so yeah, shout out to you, uh, I'll be sending these pretty soon. Hopefully you'll be getting them very fast because you're very close, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, congratulations again. Uh, there will be another giveaway pretty soon, I guess. Um, Maybe at the next uh, big, um, I guess, the next big achievement for the subscriber count, but uh, maybe even earlier than that, depending on, uh, you know, what happens on the channel and whatnot. And just before we end, we have the Crossed Souls uh, Challenge, where we try to get the Ghost Rare First Edition. Will we be blessed? Let's find out. Come on, come on. Woohoohoo! Okay, it is not the Ghost Rare, but it's an Ultimate Rare, Ritual Beast Ulti Gaia Pelio, 1st Edition. This is gorgeous. I do believe I have a few of these. I don't remember how many I have in Ultimate Rares, but 1st Edition Ultimate Rare, definitely a big plus. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's vid. I know I did. 
Uh, and until next time, guys, it's been a pleasure, and Panem out.